really nice palms. They uh, they did us which they did us proud this year. These are really nice. And we're excited about that. We're excited about Holy Week and everything that's going to transpire this week. You be well, we know everybody has busy schedules and things like that. You be as as much a part of the, the services and the circumstances here with our church as, as you possibly can. And uh, just be faithful to the Lord. Be faithful to the Lord. I think that's what He's looking for us. We don't want to be busy just to be busy. We want to be faithful to Him and faithful for a reason uh, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, the scripture that Gail read to us this morning from John chapter 12 deals with Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem. The folks there were hailing him as, uh, as the Messiah, as the King, as, as the Lord. They were hailing him there and they were throwing their clothes down before him. They were throwing their coats and their jackets down before him and they were throwing palms down as they would before a king. And it was a special moment there. And as I shared with the young folks here just a, just a moment ago, just a few short days later, Jesus would be nailed to a cross, similar to the one in, in the front of our auditorium. He'd be nailed to the cross. He'd be crucified. The spear would pierce his side. The crown of thorns would be placed on his head. I have to be very careful here. It could be cracked me some crown. As we put the crown of thorns on our cross there. These are real. And if you, uh, man... I picked this up one time and it stuck myself with one of those thorns. And it uh, it bled. And it was painful. So can you imagine dropping that on your head? The things that we did to our Lord, the things that the world did, should remind us of His sacrifice. And that's just one of the little things. We're giving His life for us. Paying the sin debt for us. Shedding His blood. His blood became the atonement for us during this season. So you be a part of every aspect of this Holy Week that you can. Share the gospel. Share the witness of your life. Share the witness of your church. Share the love of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. As they spread those palms in the verses that Gail was reading there in John chapter 12. And Jesus rode that, that young donkey into the middle of the folks as he was sitting on, on that donkey. Verse 16 of John 12 says, For these things his disciples did not understand at first. But afterwards they remembered that God had said he would do these things and that why he would do these things. And why people would respond to him. God had a plan. And he's had a plan from the foundations of the world so that he can bring us back to him. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through who? Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ our Lord. He's the one. He's the one that makes a difference. His shed blood comes. And God's plan is part of all of this, beginning with that Palm Sunday as we start our Holy Week as it has been called. Jesus begins to foretell of his death. Now there were some guys there that had come to uh, the King James Bible calls them Greeks or Grecians. And they'd come and they asked the disciples, they asked Peter and Andrew and a couple other disciples, you know, James and John I believe, they said, you know, sir, we would see Jesus. We want to meet Jesus is what they were saying. And they came there and then the disciples come over to Jesus and they say, we've got some, some Greeks here, some non-Jews that want to meet you. And Jesus begins to talk to them and to the disciples in the immediate area and begin to tell them about what's going to happen. I mean, he just walked in and just had this great, uh, great time with, with the palms being laid down. It begins to talk about his upcoming death and all of that. And you know, I'm going to take a step back just for a moment. Can you imagine the disciples? I want you to put your place in the put yourself in the disciples' place this morning as they're walking in 
And they're laying those palms and they're laying those coats in front of the donkey that Jesus is riding. How would you have felt seeing all the crowd? I mean, what had Jesus just done a few days prior? He had raised Lazarus from the dead. He had given credence to his ministry. He had given, given credence to everything that he was doing. I mean, he had healed multiple people. But raising someone from the dead, nobody else was doing that. I mean, that was top-notch stuff. And so folks were paying attention to him. They were paying attention to him. And those disciples, as they're walking along, you, you wonder what was going through their mind. Like, yeah, you know, this is what... I signed up for you know this is awesome. You know we're right out on the ground floor. Did you ever get in on the ground floor of something that was really good? A lot of times it's one of those pyramid schemes. <laughs> and it's right, and they yank the rug out from under you. But you know they ran out on the ground floor of something that they thought was really good. Jesus had come. Jesus was going to do this promise that had been made. Gifts were given. And everything was going good. And everybody loved them. Now, I know about you, but I just don't go out and try to antagonize people just for the sake of doing it. Now, sometimes things we do or say, it's going to rub someone somewhere the, <clears throat> the, the wrong way. But just for the sake of doing it to be doing it, I mean, they were happy that the people loved Jesus. They were happy that the, 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 the shouts of Hosanna were coming out. They were happy about all of that. And they were looking forward to serving with him and making a difference and maybe perhaps uh, overthrowing the Roman, Roman government and all the things that went with them that they were being oppressed and all that they were looking forward to. Good days coming. Good days coming. But you know, Jesus begins to say there in verse 23 of that John chapter 12, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Jesus speaks of himself here as the Son of Man. He identifies himself with humanity as he is the only one that could pay the debt that humanity owes God. The wages, the price, the cost of sin is death. But God's gift through Jesus Christ is eternal. He is our Lord. As we were doing a Bible study, I guess it's been about a year and a half ago now, in the book of John, here in our class, uh, we kept saying, Jesus didn't reveal himself because, and the class would say in unison, because his hour had not yet come. It wasn't time for him to reveal himself yet. It wasn't time for the world to see him as, as the Savior, to see him as the Lord, to see him the, as the one that can make the difference. As we got to this point of the Holy Week starting, now Jesus says, now the time has come. The hour has come. The world recognizes something in me. And I'm going to give back to them in a way that they won't understand at first. But it will become ultimately clear. And as Jesus is talking to those disciples and talking to those Greeks that wanted to meet him, he says there in verse 24, he says, You know, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a, a, a wheat of corn fall into the ground and die, it cannot bring forth much fruit. Now some of you are farmers. Some of you uh, do gardening on the side. And, and just before long, we'll be dropping seeds in the ground. We'll be putting plants in the ground. And we will water them. We will fertilize them. We will put them in a place where sunshine can, can shine upon them. And fingers crossed, what will happen at that point? They will what? Right. They will grow. They will grow. They will grow. And the analogy that Jesus here is giving when he's talking about that kernel, that, that kernel rather, going into the ground. That seed is not alive. But given the right circumstances, given the right conditions, 
that seed will grow and it will sprout from life. And Jesus here speaking of his, his upcoming death to these, these folks that are around him, the Greeks and the disciples, and he's telling them, he's foretelling them of what is going to happen. And this is the hour that he has, has looked forward to. This is his moment to shine. His moment to shine. We're talking with some of you to digress just for a moment on a sports analogy of the Cinderella story of a local Loyola Chicago basketball. Their moment to shine. A team no one really expected to do anything like this has risen to this great basketball mecca of the final four. It's their moment to shine. And good for them. Good for them. But in a spiritual aspect, this week, as Christianity and as believers and as followers of Jesus Christ, this is our moment to shine because we have the victory in Jesus Christ. He's not on this cross anymore. That cross is empty. The tomb is empty. And He's alive. Right now, at this very moment, Jesus Christ is at the right hand of God the Father and He's making intercession for this poor excuse of a man that stands before you. And he's saying, that's my servant, Wendell Packer, Father. I love him. I died for him. He's doing the best that he can. Won't you bless what he's doing? Won't you bless the people that are hearing you? Won't you uplift him? Won't you uplift them and guide them so they can be my light? My light to the world. He wants to be that in me. He wants to be that in you. We just have to receive him. Let him do that. Let him purify our hearts, let Him purify our souls, let Him purify the faith that He's delivered to us. He deals with each one of us in different ways. And he wants to bring us to a place where we are good vessels, where we are strong soldiers for Him. I want to draw your attention to in verse 27 of John chapter 12. When Jesus said it, it shows the humanity side of Jesus. He's already identified himself as the Son of Man, the one who became like us to pay the price for us. When he says there in verse 27 of, of John 12, he says, Now is my soul, this is Jesus talking, Now is my soul troubled. What shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour, from this time of testing, from this time of persecution from this time of giving. Save me from this hour that I was born for. Should I say that? Should I say that? He said, the reason that I'm here, friends and disciples, <coughs> is to die for you. There's no other way to pay for your sins. There's no other way I can reconcile your sin debt to God of the Lord God to you. It was a troubling moment for Jesus. And he says, For this cause I came into the world. For this cause, for this reason I was born. And then each one of us needs to do, he says, Father, glorify your name. Glorify your name. I don't want anyone to heap praise or adoration. On me. I want you to like me. I want you to love me. I, I want to do a good job for God. But any praise or adoration that, that we receive, we want it to go up to God. Because it's all about Him. It's not about me. In me no good thing dwells, the scripture says, but in Christ. In Christ, we have the victory. We have the victory. He gave us the victory. He was willing to go to that cross. He was willing, willing to die for me. You know, I love a lot of people. I've got some special people in my life. You folks are numbered among them. But you know, when we think of folks in our lives, you think of people that you would really actually die for. People that you'd be willing to die for. People that say perhaps if a building was on fire and one of your loved ones was in it, you'd be willing to go in. You'd be willing to, no matter what the cost or what the consequences would be, you'd be willing to go in and let the chips fall in the 
That's what Jesus did for us. Our house was on fire. We had no way out. He came in for us. He came in for us. He was willing to risk everything for us. More than risk, He died for us. The third day He rose again. We've got a message, folks. We've got a promise. We've got a hope in Him. He is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. And I tell folks all the time, once I met Jesus Christ, I've never been the same. I've had good days, I've had bad days, I've had ups, I've had, had, had downs. I've been bad, I've been good, whatever emotion you can experience. But I've never been the same. Reading his word last night as I was, I've been trying to, to prepare and just kind of stack the messages up. Reading ahead just a little bit. I'm going to be in the book of Luke. Next Sunday morning, Luke 24. And just reading God's Word and reading about the resurrection and reading about everything that was going on in it. Last night, the hairs on the back of my neck just began to stand up. I got excited thinking He did that for me. And that's the great thing about Christianity. We make it personal. It's not just a big religious thing. It's a personal relationship that I can have, that you can have with a risen Savior who died for me, who died for you personally. That's the specialness of this time. The specialness as we start this week. The specialness is, is we realize God wants to do wonderful things in our life. As those folks spread those palms out, as they said, Hosanna, Hosanna. You know what that meant? Simply put, it meant this. We're asking you now, Jesus, save us. Save us now, Jesus. Save us now. Meet us at the point of whatever needs we have here, physically, spiritually, monetary, whatever they are. Meet us at those needs. Save us now. Hosanna. Save us now. Wherever you're at today, Jesus can meet you at the point of that need. I'm not going to stand here and promise you that every, everything will go away and, and the sky will open and all of this, but He will walk with you. And whatever adversity that you might be going through, He might be using that in your life to draw you closer to Him. I don't know. I don't know. Get along with Him and He will show you who He wants you to be and how He wants you to be. Because that's who He is. And that's what He wants for each one of us. Hosanna! Save us now! Save us now! Meet us at the point of our need. We're asking you. <laughs> Sirs, we, we, would, we would see Jesus. Is He available? Can we talk to Him? What a difference in America this week. If we, instead of marching for or against things or doing all of this stuff, and I'm not bad nothing, anybody for doing anything, but if our heart would change to, we want Jesus. We want to see Jesus in our hearts and our lives. We want to see Jesus in every aspect of what we're doing. Folks wanted to meet Jesus. Unfortunately, over the last 50 or 60 years in American society, we just keep trying to figure out ways of removing His influence, God's influence, Jesus' influence from, the act, from every aspect of our homes, our schools, our businesses, major scenes on government property. Just shove him away. Shove him away. Folks, let's get back to the point where we want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. Make him part of our hearts and our lives. He's done so much for us. Let's be faithful. Let's choose him. Let's acknowledge him. And let's receive him. And the gift that he gives to us. And he will bless and purify our souls. So I say to you this morning. Hosanna! Hosanna! We praise you, Father. And we ask that you save us now. Amen.
In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for your attention this morning. Let's, uh, you don't have to stand for this one. Thanks for